Hello everyone, and welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking about Death Stalker by Simon R. Green. The description is good on. Here, um, Her Imperial Majesty Lionstone the Fourteenth rules the human empire with fear. From peasants to masters of the galaxy's most powerful families, all are subject to the Queen's unpredictable decrees of outlawing and death. <clears throat> Yeah, she really does do this a lot, you know. In fact, they have a nickname for her. It's called the Iron Bitch. That was kind of funny. <laughs> oh, and Deathstalker, unwilling head of his clan, uh, seeks to avoid the perils of the Empire's warring factions, but unexpectedly finds a price on his head. He flees to Mistworld, where he begins to build an unlikely force to topple the throne. A broken hero and an outlawed Hayden man which is basically a cyborg, a thief and a bounty hunter. With their help, the Death Stalker takes the first step on a far more dangerous journey to claim the role of which he's been destined before, since before his birth. As essentially, um, but for me to describe this, it's like a combination between uh, like a little bit of Dune a little bit of Warhammer 40k and um, a little, not exactly Star Wars, but um, mostly like Dune and Warhammer, kind of what it reminds me of. <clears throat> Actually, kind of um, two plots. The first uh, revolves around Owen Deathstalker, and the other one involves um, Nathan Finlay. Anyway, um, Death Stalker is uh, basically outlawed for essentially no reason, really. And um, I think they, there is kind of a reason, you know, is um, like, you know, the Death Stalker, because the Queen has all these plans in motion and the Death Stalker could, you know, kind of ruin them. But it's kind of made clear right from the beginning that he has no, that Owen has no desire to do anything. So yeah, the queen is just stupid. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> then there's the, like you said this other plot concert with uh, Nathan Finlay, and he's uh, like this nobleman who occasionally likes to disguise himself and be a uh, gladiator. He's the uh, just the masked swordsman or something mm -hmm. and he is um like uh, there's this family feud and eventually his family is killed off by this rival family and the and of course the queen is just okay with that mm -hmm. and um and he him and his um his his love or fiance is have to hide because his fiance is actually a clone, which, oh yeah, those are also kind of outlawed. Uh, there's a, this world, there are like um, clones, espers, um, and uh, hated men, which are basically cyborgs. And, um, well, oh, well, like overall, the um, I found all of the characters to be interesting and pretty cool. You know, like there's the thief is um, Adrian Dark. Um, the hated man is Tiberian Moon. And, you know, like there, there's some flaws. Like, um, there's this one thing called the world called Mist World. And it's like the one world that is completely free from Imperial rule. But they never really explain why. Like, they say there's. Um, some sort of psychic screen or something surrounding the planet, but that doesn't exactly prevent ships from landing. That wouldn't exactly prevent soldiers from landing and and uh, you know taking out and t uh, occupying cities and stuff. That wouldn't exactly prevent orbital artillery from destroying cities or prevent even the the imperial espers and Vampires and stuff. Oh yeah, vampires are in this too. I guess that would prevent th those guys from really doing anything. So 
There's not really any really good reason for this other than the plot says so, but what whatever. Then there's um then there's like um this is another plot, like I said, um his fiance was a clone, but um cloning is outlawed in the Empire. And um sees um so what it, like what happens is this guy's daughter is killed, dies in this accident of some kind. And so like Rich Sturkin, he has a like but he has a clone made of her in secret. And I don't know, like you said, the you no know, cloning's outlawed, so but luckily like nobody knows that she died, so he um you know, like made made the clone, taught her everything that she knows and so forth, and eventually she grow up completely and, and of course falls in love with that Finlay person. But then they decide last minute, just out of nowhere, oh by the way, he's us by the way that he's sleeping with her. And it's like what? Just out of nowhere and it's it's never mentioned again, at least not in this book. Anyway, it was like, she's your daughter. Like, okay, she's actually your the clone of your daughter, but still, you know, just really messed up. And it's like it's put in there for no other reason than you know, look at me, I'm trying to be edgy, yeah. Um. And lastly is like um right now I had already said the whole queen has no really real reason to be afraid of Owen Deathstalker. But yeah, but for the most part, you know, the store was good, they explained most almost everything. And I've only read this one book, so there's um is it the one is Deathstalker Rebellion? And I'm and I'm hoping to probably explain more in that. <clears throat> and um, just overall, it was just a very enjoyable, fun action piece with you know lots of cool, interesting, and sympathetic characters for the most part, save for that one dad of the clone. But yeah, overall, I give it. Uh, Four stars. It was there's some stuff that bugged me, like I said, listed earlier. But overall, I really enjoyed it. It was just a great read. Go check it out. Anyway, um, till next time. I'm your host. See you later.